when I first started digging for disco records, my good friend Brian said to me, you're going to get through all the West End and Prelude stuff, and then you're going to start searching for a different beat. This is the record that, that I was obsessed about that eventually led me to tracking down Keith Hutchinson, one of the people that co-wrote Zulu Disco. He said to me, oh, did I ever send you the other music that I recorded in the 80s? And I was like, no, uh, please send it through. And he sent it through and it floored me. I probably turned it up a little too loud at the time and I had a, a dance around the studio by myself. I straight away sent the email through to my partner in Crown Ruler, Jamie. You know, he had been speaking to me about, he said, oh look, let's try and put some music out. And yeah, I just said to him, I think I've found Crown Ruler 001. Zulu is our first release. It's a rediscovery. The record came out in South Africa 33 years ago. 34 years ago. It wasn't some private release tape that no one ever heard and didn't make the market. It must have had some radio play. It must have had some traction in the industry because the tune Moga on the, the cassette was, was covered a couple of times. Crow Ruler was born uh, a long time before I got involved. It's a brainchild of Jamie Bennett. We do parties, we've got a, an online record store, we do artists' representation, and yeah, we've just launched a record label. The design we're, we're really, really happy with. Uh, graphic design was done by local DJ and record collector Ryan Fraser, and he's got really good taste as well, good taste in music. One of the most important aspects of a release, it's just as important as the content, I think, is the, the actual mastering. We're very lucky to have a guy named Dan Ellison based in Melbourne. I don't know how he does what he does, but the guy is a genius. So this building, uh, well, this is, this is my workshop down here. It's an absolute clusterfuck of broken technology. I work in engineering, which to me is just also the arts. It's like, you know, I grew up writing music and recording music and building things is the same. Building a hut, um, building a guitar. Well, I don't build guitars, but you know what I mean. A lot of turntables here from sort of the DJs of Melbourne. Lots of old stuff from like, yeah. You know, I'm surrounded by old stuff. This is a theme in my life. With the Zulu EP, uh, I, I only know that the cassette tape came from somewhere in South Africa. I mean, that's my understanding. Uh, I mean, the, the music is incredible. Just one of these little wonders. And I did what I could to get that insane music off the, uh, off the cassette using a little bit of modern technology, but doing it tastefully and just not spoiling it. So doing as little as possible, but enough to do it justice. For us, it's just insanely good. It already exists, you know. It didn't take that much work to, to share it, you know. It's, uh, it's so worth doing. To reach new heights with art, you have to build on what came before. And that's one of the reasons why preserving and reissuing back catalogue stuff, especially lesser known stuff, is important. It's, a, it's actually, it's a really funny thing for me to stop and think about why should we do what we do? Why should we invent and create and discover and archive and rediscover? Like, what the fuck else are we gonna do? The record has found its way into the hands of a lot of the right people for us as a label and getting exposure. We've personally handed the record to a few people. Red Greg has played it, Giles Peterson played it on, on Worldwide FM. Uh, Dimitri from Paris emailed me asking for the files because he wanted to play it. Who knew he was getting into the underground sounds of South Africa? Yeah, look, we have a, a really fair deal with our artists and um, the more records we sell, the more money the artist makes. They, they get a percentage, so the more successful the record, the better it is for them. It goes back to what I mentioned before about what Brian said about searching for a different beat and always searching for something new and exciting. You know, there's millions of records that I've never heard before. So I'll keep on discovering new things. As long as that keeps happening, I suppose I'll keep doing it.